Hello, everybody, and greetings from Arlington, Virginia. Behind me, you see a very nice example of the Magnolia grandiflora, or the Southern Magnolia. It's not the blooming season at the moment, but when it is in bloom, it's quite a spectacular sight. I'd like to welcome you to this new virtual version of our BHL annual meeting. Um, not quite Paris, but I'm glad that everyone is remaining safe and um, taking care of themselves. I'm going to start my presentation now. And there we go. So what I'd like to do is call this our report on the year of the old normal. 2019 was a very good year for BHL and we did, had a number of great accomplishments. But I'd like to go a little bit back in time using the Wayback Machine to look at some of our previous adventures in the land of BHL. Just here's a quick recap of some of our older meetings from the past, 2013 in Woods Hole, 2014 New York Botanical Garden and American Museum, 2015 the Field Museum in Chicago, 2016 our 10th anniversary year in London, 2017 Singapore, 2018, and Los Angeles. Last year, we gathered at almost this exact same time at Cornell University in Ithaca and had a fabulous meeting there. In terms of partnerships, 2019 was again a continuing good year for BHL. We continued to have 20 members and 22 affiliates and over 80 worldwide partners who co contributed content and services to BHL. We also continue to partner with many of the important biodiversity organizations around the world, TADWIG, um, CTOF, Encyclopedia of Life, GBIF, as well as two large international national digital library programs, Europeana and the Digital Public Library of America. The content of BHL also continued to grow in 2019 at a rapid pace. Here's a familiar slide which shows our overall totals of 58 million plus pages and 256,000 volumes, the size of a typically very large natural history or botanical garden library. We also continue to grow our, grow our in copyright content with over 360 licensors providing open access content for BHL and over 800 titles from those publishers. In terms of item growth, here's our typical chart. You can see the last few years have been a little bit downward slope, but we do continue to grow at a good pace. Likewise with pages, we're staying steady, but continuing to grow. Our name finding algorithm continues to increase the ability to find taxonomic information within BHL. Um, we had that large spike with a change in the algorithm and we continue to work on the algorithm with the Global Names Architecture Program. One thing I'd like to highlight, which actually did happen in 2020, is we surpassed um, 1 million PDFs generated by our users. Um, PDFs have been generated since 2009, so in a little over 10 years, we've generated over a million PDFs from DHL content. Who is our user community? Um, the one thing I would like to focus on is our year-over-year -year rate, 2018 to 2019. Our u overall users are up 18%, new users up nearly 20%, and sessions up 15%. Here we can see that in graph chart, and you may notice a spike there earlier in 2020. That is when there was an uh, article that received a lot of hits, was published in Colossal Magazine, and we had a huge spike in um, usage at that point. Our top refers remain a lot of the usual sources from both the more um, public world as well as our taxonomic community, Wikipedia, um, Pinterest, Facebook, etc., and then from the taxonomic community, marine species, tropicos, and plant list are significant providers. In terms of languages, our users are coming primarily from English-speaking um, browser sessions. Um, that's a combination of both the US and UK language as noted. I'll also just highlight there, we do have both France, French, as well as Francophone nations that are coming not from France. 
Chinese showed a large spike this year, so moving up to number two. And then you can again see Spanish, French, Portuguese from Brazil, Italian, and German. I'd also like to again highlight, as I often do, the increased movement towards mobile on the platform. As you can see, desktop continues to decrease as a portion of overall use, whereas mobile continues to grow at a rather significant pace. Again, just some highlight map showing 2019 20, 2019 versus 2019 to 2020, and 2018 versus 2019. Um, a quick glance at this map again shows that generally speaking, most of the nations are roughly the same. But when we dig down a little bit deeper, you'll again see. Here's again our 2018 sessions with US, India, UK, Germany, Canada in the top five. But when we compare that to 2019, you'll see some, a very interesting fact. Again, China has moved onto the top 10 list. In fact, all the way up to number four. Um, Italy has dropped off the list. Most of the other um, countries were pushed down a little bit by the entry of China and Australia stayed the same. Here again, we have a quick um, heat map showing again usage by cities around the world last year versus this year. And again, some surprising information in this, our top 10 cities for this past year, we saw Chicago jumping into the top 10 where it had never been before. Many of the other cities stayed the same. On the other side of the screen, you can see the previous two years ago, actually, where London was number one, New York, Beijing, Melbourne, Sydney. I'd also like to highlight this, which is a year-over-year -year statistic from February through February 15 through April 25, 2019 versus 2020. Um, 20, February 15th is when we tagged the start of the COVID crisis at a global level in terms of a lot of out-of-office work. And the key takeaway from this chart is the increased usage year-over-year -year during this time period with users up 28%, new users up 31%, sessions up, page views, um, page sessions, and average session duration. And a key factor here I'd like to highlight is the bounce rate, which went down 2.6%, which means once people arrived on the site, they stuck around. Here we can see those same statistics in a, in a chart format, and you can see again that roughly 27 to 35 percent increase in this year to year, year over year time period from February to April. Let's move on to a little bit about governance and the Secretariat. Um, this past year, we said farewell to Nancy Gwynn as the immediate past chair. Nancy retired in December and she is um, enjoying her retirement as much as possible under the circumstances. It's not certainly what she was expecting. We also said goodbye to Doug Holland. Well, actually not goodbye, more of a till later. Doug remains at the Missouri Botanical Garden but did step down as secretary. When things go, things come. So we'd like to welcome David Igledon as secretary to the BHL from the Royal Botanic Gardens Q. And we'd also like to note the vacant spot in the secretariat of the program manager, which has been luckily filled as of March by our new program manager, Colleen Funkhauser, who you'll hear more from a little bit later. Here, I'm just gonna highlight a few of the presentations, meetings, poster sessions I've participated in. Again, before any BHL presentation, I do try to consult with Charles Darwin to make certain that we are on the same page. A couple of key meetings that I would like to highlight that we did attend include the spinach meeting in Chicago, the third annual digital convergence conference, and the catalog of life meeting that was held in Urbana-Champaign. However, the biggest single um, meeting that the BHL attended this year was the large biodiversity next conference in Leiden. We had one of our best attended ever BHL symposiums there. We had over 150 people, I think, at the session. Um, and again, we had a great lineup of speakers, including Constance Rinaldo from the Museum of Comparative Zoology, um, Nicole Carney from Australia, Rod Page, Dima Mozeron from the Global Names Architecture, and I appeared briefly on stage too. Another important meeting that we held this year was our um, annual executive committee retreat. Um, this year we um, were hosted by David at Royal Botanic Garden Kew and Jane Smith at the Natural History Museum London. 
Joel Richard joined us, as did Nancy Gwynn, for um, some technical updates from Joel and some governance guidance from Nancy. I'd also just like to memory lane a bit. The table that we're stand, sitting at here is the table where we actually had the first BHL meeting at Natchester Museum London with Graham Higley at the Natural History Museum. A few things on technical development, but you're going to be hearing much more from Joel on that later today. Our technical team remains the same. Our server architecture remains the same. And our dark storage continues to grow on pace as predicted a few years ago, now standing at 148 terabytes. I'd also like to highlight the use of um, increased use of our transcription content within BHL, and we continue to um, work with existing providers and look for new ways to provide new content. A little bit about finances. And I'm going to start with our donations. In 2019, we had 178 individual donors to BHL generating $12,758,000 from a low of 28 cents, I don't quite know why, 23 cents was donated up to $855. We had 26 countries providing donations and 32 US states. And when you add that all up, that comes to the dues of one member and 2.7 associates affiliates just a quick little glance back at the change 2018 2019 the total number of donors was down the grand total generated was down a little bit but we saw more countries donating and more states here's just a quick little color map of the states that donated to BHL and the countries and here's the countries in a different kind of graph I'd also like to give you the 2019 due spending closeout. So I'll just sort of show these numbers with our income, total member income, affiliates, carryover from the previous year, and the expenses that we had against that secretariat and executive travel. Um, then also our biggest source of expenditures remains our technical development and our contract with Mike Lichtenberg through the Missouri Botanical Garden. Um, we did buy some um, contracting work last year, as you may remember, which was the metadata model refresh with index data. And then we did provide some travel funding for um, BHL staff members to attend meetings and then our cost for our annual meeting in Ithaca. This is our outreach budget, about $1,400. And so our total costs were around 211,000 with then leaving us a carryover balance of about 68,000. Let's look forward a little bit into the future. We can sit in this comfortable French library reading chair while we do that. Um, and I'd like to sort of highlight some of the key things that I'd like us to be working on. Number one is our IIIF implementation. Joel will talk a little bit about that later. We're also continuing work with the global names architecture to improve name finding and the catalog of life to improve new ways to intersect with the global with names such as synonyms, taxonomic trees, etc. I'm going to show you a quick draft of our 2020 spending plan. Um, because of accounting methods that have changed at the Smithsonian, we are redoing that, which is why the members haven't had a chance yet to vote on the actual finalized plan. Working with our new finance and administrative offices at the Smithsonian, we're going to have a revamped financial accounting method. So this is the rough due spending plan as approved at the December executive committee meeting. And it's roughly pretty much the same. We were conservative on our member renewals. It looks like we will have all 20 members at this time and we'll continue our affiliates. Um, it's very likely that our travel expenses will be significantly cut this year. Um, this is another reason why I'm holding off on giving a final budget for vote since we're gonna have to revise these numbers significantly. Technical development remains the same, cost roughly with a 3% increase. And again, some of these travels and our meeting costs are pretty much zero since we did have to delay the meeting in Paris. 
I'd also just like to highlight the importance of DHL, which Connie alluded to in her opening statement in terms of how DHL is valuable in a time such as this. We've been receiving a number of testimonials from our users around the world, and our um, DHL secretariat staff have been working closely with our partners all around the world to provide impactful and meaningful telework to assist both their own institutions and our institutions around the world. Perhaps my favorite testimonial that's come in so far was from this master's degrees candidate who thanked us very much and included a donation because they were able to be using DHL content while unable to visit their institution in person. With that said, I know we won't be in Paris this month or last month, um, but again, as we know, Gilles Savian has agreed to host the 2021 meeting at the Natural History Museum. So I'm hoping we'll see many of you all there and perhaps some new partners. Thank you very much for your um, time today. I'm looking forward to talking to you all online at our call-in sessions later and see you in person when the time comes. Thank you very much. <laughs>